There's, there are proof, there are evidence. There's what is very clear. You don't need to talk plenty. We see it. Are you understanding me? Say proof by your way of life that you are called to God. That you are a child of God. You are a son. What makes you a son of God is manifesting the character of your father. There are things you see in his, uh, somebody's child that you see in his father. Now, this issue of DNA is very strong. Very strong. Recently we have learned that um, there are repeated habits that enters your DNA. And sir, when you get married and have a child, there are some things you do. You watch carefully. You notice that your child will do it. Because it's, it's passed on from your, your, your blood, your gene, to your child. This blood issue is very strong. So we carry the DNA of God. It's expected that you manifest the fruits that God carries as a Christian. Listen to New King James. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the rot to come? Is it inside or outside? Outside. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. So, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham to be our father. That's a problem. It's not about saying to yourself, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm, you, you're saying to yourself, but what we want to see is that bear fruits that is worthy of a man that has repented. If you say you are repented, you don't do what an unbeliever does. Your life is different. Because the Bible says, by their fruits, we shall know them. So if your fruit is not the fruit of the character and the life of God, you have not actually repented. You are just saying, I am a Christian. You're just saying that, yes, I prayed the prayer with them. Part of the problem that I see with the church is that the premise in which people come to Christ is wrong. The premise is wrong. You came to Christ because you want to get something. And we started by talking about um, um, our focus as a church is wrong. When we come to church, you want to get. Church, you're thinking church is about you. Church is not about you, it's about him. So when you're going to church to worship, you're going to worship the king. Is at this, there's a throne that you must cast your crown and bow before and worship him. So we have lost the essence of church. So when you come to church, a powerful message, whatever title of the message is, is preached. We preach about every other thing. Then we say, if you want to enjoy this, what do you do? You give it. So you're giving your life to Christ, not because you're feeling sorry for your sins, not because you love God. But because you want to get this. So the premise is wrong. And when the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? So a lot of people are born again. They are, they are saying with their mouth that Abraham is our father. But actually, there is no fruit worthy of repentance. Why? The premise in which they came to Christ is wrong. Let me even shock, shock you more. Some of you, most of us, we give our life to Christ because we don't, we don't want to go to hell. You know it's the wrong premise. Even though it's okay. Because, because of your fear, I'm not going to hear you come to Jesus. It's a wrong premise. It's because it's not. It, listen, that means let me ask you a question. Just imagine that there's no hell. <laughs> eh? Brother, just imagine that today God will come and say that uh, I've, 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 let's have the other people's theology that there's nothing like hell. That when you when you when you see very plenty and God is so angry with you, so he would throw you. Because out of anger, he will overthrow you that you pass hell and land in heaven. Have you heard those lies? <laughs> and as people that they're saying there's no hell, that God loves man so much that he can't allow man to go to hell. Just imagine, sir, that today they say, they say there's no hell. What do you think will happen to man? No, let me just church. Yes. Let's no just about what will happen to us, sir? That bro will say, ah, thank God. This sister that I've been uh, eyeing. <laughs> so you see, 
our premise is the issue. Because if you actually received him, you should, there's a DNA of God in your heart. So there's two kinds of repentance. There's godly sorrow that leads to repentance, and there's a worldly sorrow. Some ladies have aborted once or twice. They stopped their abortion, not because they fear God or love God, but because they, they say what this sorrow. They, they, maybe they paint or they, whatever is the reason. But so as if they became moral, said, I don't do girlfriend, boyfriend again. They are not stopping that immoral life because they have, they have, they say God this sorrow. They have encountered God and they are genuinely repentant in their hearts. But they are stopping that immoral life because of some of the consequences around them. So that is not repentance. So some Christians are living moral lives on a wrong premise. Please, let me push on. Because I must stop somewhere shortly. Listen to these scriptures. Let me show you how Christianity began. Let's read this story together. Very interesting. Some of the followers from Cyprus and Cyrene, this is after the persecution of the church. When they were gathered together, they were comfortable. So God broke persecution. They scattered and they were preaching the gospel everywhere they went. And also, this is the scripture I was trying to bring about last, last month that uh, the believers, those that spread the church, were not the apostles, were ordinary believers in the early church. But in our own time, we have left it to apostles, to prophets. To, to, to do the world of the, uh, going forth and preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth. That's why the rate at which the church is growing is not compared with the rate at which Islam is growing. Because for Islam, it is the normal Muslim that spreads Islam. Anywhere they go, they see monks, they pray. If they make a, just imagine that um, they make this place where I are now, the boss is, is made a, a Muslim now. He can just put four, five stones in a place. In his house here, he will start praying. So any Muslim that comes around, they will pray together. That's how they begin a, a movement. But for Christians now, it has to be the, an apostle, the church, the prophet, that will go and pray for two months and all that. Then they will start, I mean, if we go at that, at that rate, Islam will grow faster than Christianity. So this is what happened to the early church. When persecution came, the 12 apostles, they were together in Jerusalem. They didn't go anywhere. But every other believer scattered. They were going to Cyprus, going to Egypt, going to India. Tom was going to India. They went to several places. Anywhere they went, they were witnessing. I'm reading the book presently. The preacher and his preaching. He's talking about there are four kinds of gospel. The gospel that the Bible talked about that they preached in the early church, they were just gossiping about Jesus. They were not preaching a, a systematic the way I'm preaching now. That's a different level. Because it's not everyone that is called to preach the way we're preaching. But all of us are called to witness. So but every believer should talk about Jesus. As they were talking about Jesus, people were repenting and becoming saved. And that's how places became saved. And when they hear that these people have heard the gospel, do you know what they would do? They would send Barnabas. Barnabas, we've heard that the people in Athens have received the gospel. How do they receive the gospel? Believers like me or you manifesting Jesus as they went around. Let me read the scripture so amplify what I'm saying. Some of the followers from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and started telling Gentiles. No, Gentiles are, they are philosophers. They have their mindset. They didn't believe in God. But just imagine ordinary Christians telling the Gentiles. That's why it took Paul, because he was a high, high, highly intellectual person, to break the ground of Gentiles. God used him. He went to places arguing, talking about, uh, uh, about Christ and all that. They were convinced that several of them became born again. So but we see ordinary believers going, telling Gentiles the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's power was with them. See what they carried. They carried power. He said, I will be with you always. They, they said, deposit inside of the, They carried the Lord's power with them. And many people turned to the Lord and put their faith in him. News of what was happening reached the church in Jerusalem. The headquarter was in Jerusalem. So the news that, be, ah, I don't know whether they didn't know who, who were the people that preached in those places. They didn't bother. But all they heard that those people were, 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 were saved. The Gentile people were saved. Then they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Then Barnabas got there and saw that God was kind enough to do for them. He was very glad. So he begged, that, he begged to remain faithful. He begged to remain faithful to the Lord with all their hearts. Barnabas was a good man of great faith, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Many more people turned to the Lord. Listen to verse 25. Barnabas went to Tarsus, took 
Look for some. And this is what we need to do in our today's church. Looking for gifts and partnership. Listen, listen very carefully. Listen. Barnabas knew his gifts. He was among the twelve. He was a senior apostle. But he went and looked for Paul. He, he, I don't know whether he had, he sensed the grace on the life of Paul. He, let me read the truth. He, he went to, to look for Saul. He looked for, sometimes you have to look to find. He looked for Saul. He found Saul and brought him to Antioch. Where they met with the church for a whole year. So when church, Paul was a teacher. Barnabas might not have been a teacher per se. But Paul was more, he was involved, he was an, an apostle, he was a teacher, um, he, he might not be a pastor, but Paul was not, he's not like the pastor, Barnabas was more like the pastor. He, he could break grounds, but he was a very serious teacher, he could expound the word. So he brought, if you notice, if you read through, Barnabas and Saul, you will notice that the Bible says Barnabas and Saul, Barnabas and Saul, but as the time continued, you remember the Bible said, Saul and Barnabas. Read through the Acts. The story changed. It that became Saul and Barnabas. Because Barnabas recognized the, the gift of, of Saul and he gave him the platform. He knows that he could teach better than he was. Even though we usually say that Barnabas was Paul's disciple. In a way, okay. God used him. We need men in our lives. So I, I appreciate the fact that um, Barnabas looked for him, brought him, and for one year, Bible said they taught the church in Antioch. And listen to what happened. Many of its people, they, there in Antioch, the Lord's followers were first called Christians. You see, why did they call them Christians? Who called them Christians? And why did they call them Christians? That's the question. Sir, who called them Christians? That's the third question. Gentiles called who Christians? Who were the Gentiles? The Gentiles who were those that were saved, that became believers, yes, correct? Then why do you think they called them Christians, sister? Because of the lifestyle they What lifestyle did they live? Next. What lifestyle did they live? They were living like Christians. They were doing what? They were manifesting Christ's character. They saw that what they heard about Jesus, those of them that were contemporary with Jesus, that saw Jesus before he died, they saw that this, there are elements there are fruits, there are manifestations that we saw in Jesus. The way they talk. At some point they said that what the, their tongue betrayed them, some disciples. They said they talked like Jesus. The Barnabas, when they arrested them, they said, ah, ah, these people are not learned people, but they noticed that they have been with Jesus. So listen, we're dealing with manifestation of the sons. And my body here is manifesting the life and character of God. And we say that the way Christianity began, it was people that first of all repented. They got saved. They received the power. They received him. Then they were taught for one whole year. One whole year. Maybe daily or twice or thrice or four times in a week. They were taught for a year. After a year, something happened to them. Bible says, as you behold the word of God in a mirror, what happens to you? You are transformed. So they transformed. They are, they, the disciples that, those that God said, with Barnabas and, and, and Saul, they often go to the mountain. They go, in the, they go and, and pray. And their flesh was broken. And when their flesh was broken, that power they received began to ooze out. And the character was transformed. People, people they didn't say nothing. But they, 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 they saw the life. They saw their behavior. They saw how they acted. They saw how they reacted. They said, these people are Christians, Christ-like. Listen, if you say you have repented, can we call you a Christian? But unfortunately, the word Christian is a name that now we give to a person that goes to church or somebody that is born into a home of two people that go to church. So we call him who? He said, if you want to feel um, your whatever, what's your religion? Do you know Christianity, let me shock you, Christianity is like Islam. Islam is religion. Do you know Islam and Christianity are ways of seeking God. But the reality is the life of Christ. Islam, there are a lot of religions. People, they know there's a God, but they don't know how to seek God. So Jesus introduced Christ as a way. He said, I am the way. 
So every other person through other religions are seeking for God. But God said, Christ is the way. That's why I said, follow me. It's not activities. As you follow him, he impacts you. As you learn from him, you become like him. Let me push it a little bit forward. Listen. When we talk about manifesting the fruits, manifesting the character of God, we're dealing with, as a Christian, what we're saying should manifest is what? Love. You carry the nature of God. But I'm saying God is what? Love. So there's an embodiment of love inside. You love the brethren. I even want to know what love is. But I'm saying love is still these things that we're talking about. Love is kind. Love is patient. So love is the character of God. If you see any genuine servant of God, that is a child of God, that is a son that is manifesting, he loves. He loves the brethren, loves people. So when we're talking about manifesting character, we're dealing with manifesting the nature of the love of God. You should be a lover. You can't love your wife and beat her. You can't love the person and want to destroy the person. Listen to what we're saying you should manifest as a believer, as a son of God. You should be kind. You should carry joy. The joy of God is a character. It's a... The, ah. Patience is a character that you should manifest. And every believer must manifest these nine fruits. Not a hey, you manifest their kindness. You, your own is patience. You, sister, I, I, I give you, I give you a, a what a joy. Your own is joy because your name is joy. <laughs> Every believer should bear the nine fruits of the Spirit. You should be kind. And as you mature and grow in God, this is automatic. They manifest themselves. Oh. Listen. I have to jump down. Let me talk about the power of God quickly before we pray. Manifesting the power of God. Um, you, you see, we see a lot of uh, scriptures that there are a lot of things that happened that looks out of the ordinary, that was supernatural. Actually, that's the normal realm that we are ought to be. But because of sin, it looks supernatural. Because when God breaks the, the natural order, that's what makes it supernatural. When God suspends the laws of nature to do a miracle, we call it supernatural. But actually, we are supernatural beings. That's why you see some strange occurrence in the Old Testament. I'm going to give you some pictures of the Old Testament's uh, manifestation of power of God uh, and the manifestation of power of God in the New Testament. I've, I've jumped now. I've, I've, I've concluded manifestation of the, fruits, uh, uh, the fruit and the character of God. I'm dealing with manifestation of the power of God in believers. Remember, we're talking about manifestation of the sons of God. So we see in scriptures of a man called Joshua. They were fighting at a point, and it was getting to evening. It was one of the fights that we saw God got involved in. And Bible said God was even throwing um, stones from heaven against the enemies. And it was getting to the evening, and these people were still much. They were not killed. I don't know what came over Joshua. He prayed a prayer that had altered the course of life. You know that um, everything rotates. As we are on the earth now, it is rotating around its axis. It's rotating like this. That's what makes a day. And as it's turning like this, it goes around a day. It, it, it gets to the evening. Then as it's rotating around its axis, it's also rotating around revolution. There's also revolution. There's rotation and there's revolution around the sun. That's what turns to a year. As he's doing this around his axis, he's also moving around the sun. And that's what makes a year. Three, six, five times, when it goes round, it becomes a year. And this, the speed at which the earth is rotating, <clears throat> it has been recorded that it rotates about 1,040 miles per hour. That's the speed. This man, because there's a people that needs to be white, needs to be dealt with. There's a judgment on people that came against some, the people of God. What did the Bible say? He prayed a prayer. I, because of time, I, I didn't want to bring the, the text 
and um, I'm just paraphrasing the story. You can pick it up in Joshua chapter 10, <clears throat> from verse 13 and 14. You notice that Joshua prayed a prayer that let the sun stand still. And surprisingly, heavens honored his prayer. God, scientifically, it has said, it has said that for that speed at which the earth was rotating, for, that, for there to be an abrupt stop, there should be commotion on the earth. Things should scatter. Things should scatter. But see how God works. Everything came to a stop, a halt, without any disorder in nature. But scientists have proven that there was a time in history that the earth, you know, time stopped. The sun stopped, stopped moving. The elements of the earth stopped moving. It's okay. Everything stopped moving to honor a prayer, the prayer of a man. I'm dealing with, I'm just trying to stay up, bring up a challenge to help us see that there are levels that we should manifest as sons. And to bring a balance, I'm not saying you should go and pray that the sun should stand still. Just like I've heard of stories of um, somebody that said he read the Bible where Jesus, uh, Peter, walked, Jesus walked on water. Then he said Jesus also, he wants to walk on water. And we've heard of people that said, um, um, just like Daniel, yeah, lion, and they entered into li the lion ate them. <clears throat> Listen, everything you see there, it's for the glory of God, and it's for God's, it's for God's glory. It's also applying to anything you're going to do for in life and for God. Let your motivation be for God's glory, number one. That's the utmost motivation behind anything you do. If it's not for God's glory, you have lost the essence. So for all that, that of um, Joshua, that of Elijah calling fire from heaven, it was, you know, that Israel had left God. They, had, they were worshipping other idols and all that, and they needed to be rushed, brought back to God. Then that was what God brought to the heart of Elijah. Set an altar and called down fire from heaven. He said that, let this be, let there be a contest. You will call down fire from, if, if, if your God answers, then we will serve him. And I'm, we are going to call down fire. I'm going to call down fire. I'm going to build an altar. And if my God answers, that means Jehovah is God. So it was a, an opportunity for Israel to be shown the power of God, that God is God. God is true. So he was not doing that to show that he's powerful. That me, ah, don't you know I'm Elijah? I was the one that prayed and rained enough for, for seven days, for seven years, uh, three and a half years. Say, so, don't you know I'm the one? I can also call down fire. But I'm just trying to make you see, Bible says we are men like Elisha. If you go to James, say, we are like, we are people of like passions. Elijah prayed and rain did not fall. And the same Elijah, when it was time, he went, it's as if he carried a key and locked him and ran away. And they looked for him, looked for him, but they didn't see him. He appeared by himself. And uh, this guy said that they've been looking for him everywhere. He said, now nah, I've come, Elijah. Go and tell your master, Elijah is here. Can we say that? That we have arrived. He brought back the key. You know, he took him a word and prayer to close the heavens. But you know, before he could open the heavens, there was a serious, he raised an altar first of all. He raised an altar, made a sacrifice, called down fire from heaven. Then he went to the mountain. He went to the mountain. He prayed. On, and heavens broke out and rains came. What am I saying tonight? Either as I'm dealing with manifestation of the power of God as, as, as one of our rights as believers, because you're carrying something that should manifest. We are saying that every manifestation of, of power is primarily for God's glory and drawing men's attention to God and not for show. There are things we can do as believers. There are things that God can do with you. You know, this chapter has not closed. You know, the chapter of strange manifestations has not closed. There are manifestations that are strange. Out of the ordinary. You know, ordinarily, there are people that are called rainmakers. Do you know about rainmakers? What did they do? Do you know they can, they can, I don't know how they do it, they can make rain not to fall. And they can also make rain to fall. They call them rainmakers. How did they do it? They do it diabolically. You know, 
The spirit realm, when the devil was cast down, he was not, the powers were not taken from him. And at a point, he was appearing among the sons of God in heaven. Bible says the gifts of God is without repentance. So there are the devil has powers too. He can count, he can do counterfeit miracles. The four three miracles that Elijah and Moses did, they did it. But their power has limits. Some water the blood, they did it. And they fought, they, but it had a limit. So the devil can also do some gimmicks, some magics, some, some, some counterfeit miracles, as it were, but he has limitations. So if unbelievers, which doctors, can some of them can we do healing miracles? Have you heard of you know, some people are, in our time when somebody gets sick traditionally? What was what's the thing they tell them to do? There's, I can't remember. I can't, there's one experience I had in it when I was a leader that has pained me. There was a girl of, sorry, when I was ATB, 9%, there was a girl from another fellowship was brought that um, she had not slept for how many days? I can't remember. And they started telling me her story. Some diabolic involvement from childbirth. She was dedicated to some idols and all that. Some, some strange happenings. And she had, they, they couldn't help her. So they brought her to, to me there. To, I was a nervous person then. The wisdom that I didn't have now that I, I would have done then is that I would have called other brethren. But I, I tried praying for her. I prayed for her, prayed for her, and I, I knew that she was not really delivered. What pained me was that after some days, I asked her that they told, they, she went to the village. She went to do it tra tra traditionally. It pained me. Because there was another case like that. There's another brother that also was dedicated to Molek when he was a small child. And this time around, somebody else from the town who is, he was uh, at that time more versed in deliverance and uh, with Brodlio then, Brodlio was one of our brothers in ATPU then, and uh, I think about three or four of us, we fasted that day. So we fixed the time for deliverance in the night. We went to the small chapel. And you know, we started praying together as a corporate body. Then a word of knowledge came to Brolio and said, Molech. Then we searched the scriptures. There was a, a demon in the Old Testament that people are sacrificed to that is called Molech. Then we prayed specifically, and that brother was delivered. He was delivered. I, I was not well versed, I didn't know much earlier. It pained me that they told that girl to go to the village. You notice that sometimes when you go to the hospital, my wife will see a lot of those cases, and she doesn't like all those cases. And when most of them are broken bones and all that, they say, go to the village. Do you know how they do it sometimes? Sometimes. Who has had a broken uh, body before? So sometimes, do you know what they do? They will carry a chicken. Sir, you can attest to that, but you carry another, a chicken or something. Then, I don't know how, I think they put that spirit of your, the way that your spirit is put in the chicken. So whatever they are doing to the chicken, first of all, I think they will break the chicken's leg. Then they will start mending it. As they are mending the chicken's leg, they are indirectly mending your leg. <laughs> Sir, is it God? Can that be God? Counterfeit power. I'm saying this because how can the devil look more, look more powerful than God? You carry power. Elijah is a man of black passion. He stopped the rain. He called out fire from heaven. Joshua prayed and the earth, the sun stood still. I'm saying that um, sons of God, we can manifest in high, in, in, in the supernatural. Not for, not for self. Not for self. Hey, I have power. No, it's for God's glory. It's to turn men to God. Let's go. I am not, I'm not going to be surprised if God raises men here and sends you to cities, to villages, and you're turning around those villages. Some of you don't know that you have anointed to heal the sick. You're not praying for the sick because that means you don't know. You don't know that you can, you, you can, you have your capacities. It's because you're not demonstrating it, so you won't know. Manifestation of the sons of God. I'm, I'm getting there. I'll soon round up. Listen, let's come to the New Testament. See how Paul manifested as a son. In fact, the book of uh, Acts of Apostles is the actions of the apostles. Is the manifestation of the apostles. The whole of the book of uh, Acts is a man. You see, they were manifesting as sons. Am I correct? It's a, it's a story of how after they received the Holy Ghost, they were manifesting. They were, they, anywhere they went, they were manifesting. 
power was manifesting. See, that of Paul in Acts chapter 19 from verse 11. And God wrought special miracles. Special. Special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Can you see? Because he carried what? Power inside. Just like Jesus, that woman with the issue of blood, she, anything that is around the anointed person is anointed. I've been reading through Leviticus. I was, I was reading how um, the Bible is saying that um, if a man is defiled or a man is leprous, whatever he touches becomes defiled. So it's the same thing. When they sprinkle the blood, that person becomes purified. So, if you contact something that is defiled, you become defiled. If you contact something that is purified, you become purified, you become holy. So for Jesus, she, his clothes was anointed. Just like there are testimonies of sitting on the seat of where that they were able to sit down. So women will come and sit there, and they become, they, they, they deliver by their faith. God will lead them to do this is what I want you to do, and all that. It depends on what God is leading you to do. There are a lot of special miracles that are not normally recorded. Special, when the Bible says special miracles, that means they are unique miracles. They are not the usual miracles. And do you know that the Acts of Apostles have not been closed yet? Read the Acts of Apostles. The normal way that books are, fin- are, are written, read Ephesians, uh, Philippians and all that, you, you will start with greetings, salutation. Then you will get, go to the, the letter. Then he said, greet this person, greet this person. There's a way they end up the letter. But you read the book of Acts of Apostles, they didn't end it that way. That is, the act of apostle is still being written. The act is still, the action of apostle is still on. So I'm, 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 I'm perplexed that, that um, 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 uh, Bible said, from his body, aprons, handkerchiefs that touches the body, he will just touch it. He was anointed. So anything he touches, contact the anointing. They take it to people that are demon possessed, people that are, are, are depressed, people that are oppressed, and that handkerchief is put on them and they become delivered. <laughs> manifesting as a son. Listen to this other one. Listen to Paul, uh, Peter's, Peter's uh, manifestation as a son. Inasmuch that they brought the sick into the streets and led them on beds and couch, couches, couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. See this other dimension. Huh? Shadow. Bible said, the son of man will arise with healings in his wings. Bible said, they that dwell in the secret place shall abide under the shadow. So we see that even the shadow of Peter, maybe he was not even aware of, because they, they are the people that come and put, they know that Peter was going to pass this way. So they bring people of different kinds of sicknesses and drop where his shadow they cast on them and they become delivered. All we're trying to say is that you carry something and you can manifest in any way. That's my message tonight. When I'm dealing with the manifestation of the sons of God and the power of God, God has not finished dealing with... We've not seen the greatest works of God yet. The Bible says, greater works shall we do. So we can do much more than we read about the scriptures. This, uh, let me stop on this scripture. So that we can pray. Acts 10 verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. Remember that he sent them out two by two. He gave them power, and they should go preach the gospel. And the Bible said they came back with a report, with a testimony. You know, when they say even the demons, that means there's a way that they categorize demons. Say demons were some stronger. Say even the demons. There's a way that some of us see demons. They say even the demons are subject, subject to us through what? Thy name. So the name you that's in your mouth, demons can. They are not being subject to you. There's a power you carry that they, they. Bible says at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. So. You've not exercised what you carry. That's why you don't know what you carry. That's what we're saying. You've not exercised it. 
Then he told them why. He said, Behold, verse 19, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. He acknowledged that the enemy has power, but the power he has given you is above the power of the enemy. The authority you have is higher than the authority of demons. You can cast out devils. You can heal the sick. That's, I'm dealing with manifestation of the power of God in believers. So tonight, can we leave this meeting with a mind, mindset that I've underused what God has put inside of me. God, I ought to manifest as a son and daughter of God. So in my conclusion, I said, your world is waiting for you. Go and manifest. Your world begins from Naifesa. That's your world for now. Your world begins from that your room. I was listening to Pastor Paul the other day. He was interviewing one of his schoolmates in the university uh, when they were medical students. He's a professor now in medicine. The man was saying he remembered that when they were in the room, um, a, when he's sleeping, when he, the roommate, is sleeping, Pastor Paul's mouth will always be, you'll be speaking in tongues, praying in spirit in the room. And all that. And he was also, Pastor Paul reaffirmed that somebody also came and was giving the same similar story. That even while they're in the class, they're giving lectures. He always see the guy's mouth, mouth always praying pray in tongues. <laughs> so they were saying that it didn't begin now, it began from the campus days. It began from the campus days. That's why it has made uh, uh, megamized to this level. So listen to the last word now. Your world is waiting for you. Go and manifest. You carry something. When somebody is sick around you, don't just only say sorry. Just lay hands and pray. You don't know what can happen. It's not you. Bible says God wrought mighty miracles by the hands of Paul. God just needs your hand. It's not your hand. He needs your leg. It's not your leg. He needs your mouth. It's not your mouth. It is him. We must not disappoint heavens. We must arise and take our generation. All right, we'll just pray for some five minutes as we round up. Give us a song. Give us a song. I should lead us to prayer.